What if what we call public opinion was just a manufactured narrative that makes it easier to convince people that if their views are different, then there's something wrong with that or there's something wrong with them? Spending is a tax. As soon as the government spends money, eventually it's a tax. Sometimes we put a direct tax on the people. Sometimes we borrow the money. And sometimes we print the money. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available. Patrick Riggins Show, and now your host, Patrick Riggins. Welcome to the Patrick Riggins Show. We're in the American Radio Show. Fighting for the true original American values of freedom and liberty. Opening the show today with some Rob Zombie, just released version of this classic song by Grand Funk Railroad. I like listening to it. <laughs> this is what we're lacking in this country today. People standing up and saying they're proud to be an American. Proud to be standing up for an out-of-control government that's... Well, it's trying its best to dictate and, and to us and control us. We're coming to you today, as we do every week, on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network, the network striving day in and day out to bring you the best in independent, non-party-affiliated thought and analysis. We promote freedom and liberty. That's it. No party promotion. No rah-rah, fake, patriotic fervor. Just the thought that individuals should be free to be themselves with no government interference. Oh, and also we're coming to you live, riding on the airwaves of the broadcast station News Talk 98.7 WOKI. This week, I want to try and recap just some of the news that's been going on. For the most part, everything's been talked about. It's been beaten to death. So what I try to do is talk about the news from the perspective of freedom and liberty because that's an angle it's not touched on during the week by the news outlets and other shows both conservative and liberal getting started this week i wanted to say a little bit about the recent election results particularly governor chris christie's re-election and the virginia race that happened this week as well now Stay with me because I'm going to tie these two races together here in a moment. First off, this buzz that's been going on this week about how Chris Christie pulled all of these voters who normally vote Democrat during this last election, particularly the Hispanic vote. The Republican establishment is practically orgasmic over that. They just can't wait to run him for president. But I'll go ahead and make a prediction already. He will lose. If Chris Christie is the nominee for president from the Republican Party, he'll lose. You can write it down right now. November 9th, 2013. Patrick Reagan said Governor Christie will lose the presidential election should he be the nominee. Now, why is that? It's because the Republican base will stay home just like they did with Mitt Romney. You nominate a liberal for president from the Republican Party, and he'll lose. The Tea Party people and those that agree with him just aren't going to tow the party line and vote for the Republican anymore. They've demonstrated they aren't afraid to stay home on the election day. And all these people he pulled from a Democrat Party in Massachusetts, they'll abandon him on the national stage leaving him way behind when it comes to counting ballots on election night. Now, I also wanted to talk about this Virginia governor's race as well, where Democrat Terry McAuliffe beat the Tea Party Republican candidate, Ken Cuccinelli. The Republican establishment is salivating over this, too, because they see it as a repudiation of the Tea Party. You can just hear them thinking this. Well, now maybe they'll stop this liberty nonsense and toe the party line. Them along with those libertarians who were defeated as well. Of course, the Republicans are blaming the libertarian candidate, Robert Sarvis, but 
The only problem with that is polls show the Republican would have still lost had he not even been in the race anyway. Cuccinelli won among the 72% of voters who cared about the economy or health care. Exit polling showed 28% of Virginia voters said they support the Tea Party movement, but 42% said they oppose it. Notice, though, this poll says Virginia voters and not Virginia Republican voters. The fact remains, the Tea Party stands for lower taxes and against Obamacare, which I just mentioned, 72% of the voters who voted for Cuccinelli care about. Now, that should tell the Republican establishment that most people voting Republican agree with the Tea Party. But see, what the establishment points to is the second part of that I have mentioned. The 28% support for and 42% against the Tea Party among Virginia voters. But that poll includes Democrats who aren't going to support the Tea Party anyway, the Republicans, and the 30% left over who either didn't answer or didn't have an opinion. That's what's left if you add the 28% with the 42%. You're still left with 32 or 30% out there that either they didn't have an answer for that or didn't have an opinion. Oh, but that doesn't fit the Republican establishment agenda of eliminating the Tea Party and the Libertarian wings, though, does it? Now, my message to the party, and it's one of the Republican establishment sending out, too, just not as obvious as I am. You rank and file Republicans, you no longer have a party. You're members of the junior Democrats. The senior Democrats are the ones already in the party. The junior Democrats are still in the Republican Party. I saw a, a story where Glenn Beck was crying about how the libertarian Robert Sarvis was funded by a prominent Democrat campaign contributor and bundler. Now, <laughs> admittedly, Robert Sarvis it really isn't a good libertarian. He ran under the Libertarian Party, libertarian with a big L, but he wasn't really a libertarian with a small L. Ron Paul didn't even endorse him. He endorsed Ken Cuccinelli. But the big story was how Sarvis was a, supposedly a spoiler for the election because of his questionable positions and the Democrat backing. As I just mentioned, though, this race was won by McCullough, whether or not the Libertarian ran. Now, to his credit, Cuccinelli was heavily outspent and largely abandoned by the Republican Party, and yet he still made the race extremely close. This should tell you we're starting to make a difference. People are starting to get fed up. But we have to keep fighting if we're going to win. Sure, we'll have some losses here and there, and that's life. But we keep on fighting because the alternative, more government, that's not acceptable. If you're worried about who is funding the Libertarian candidate, I would point out that the Republican Party has been actively supporting and promoting liberal candidates for quite a while. That's what the Republicans need to worry about. Their own party putting up candidates who aren't representative of their rank and file, but push this junior Democrat agenda. Why don't we do this? Why don't you get control of the party, wrench it away from these establishment Republicans who see nothing wrong with government control, and pull the party back towards true American freedom and liberty? We're going to have to do something. Sitting back and waiting for the problem to fix itself just isn't going to work. It certainly hasn't worked in the past, and I see no reason to suspect it to change in the future. Not without people stepping up and doing something about it, that is. All right, we're up on the first break here of the big show this week. When we come back, oh, we're going to get back to the basics a little bit. We're going to talk about this great American experiment that we have here in this country. That's back when we return on the Patrick Riggins Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. Uh, nothing like some Alice in Chains to come back into a segment. 
You're listening to me, Patrick Riggins. And I host a show called The Patrick Riggins Show. <laughs> Great when things work out like that, isn't it? <laughs> We're piping our show around the world on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. And sending it out over the ether here locally via News Talk 98.7 WOKI. This segment, I want to talk about something that I hear mentioned quite a bit. And I alluded to it when we came out of the last segment. I hear it mentioned quite a bit, but no one really elaborates on it. Or if they do, they miss the point entirely. What I want to talk about is what's been called the, quote, Great American Experiment. This American experiment here in our country that we've been doing here, well, since it was founded. Interestingly, what may shock you is it isn't about capitalism. It isn't about having a more moral or Christian government. It isn't about Christianity nor any religion. This country is an experiment in freedom, freedom and liberty. That's the experiment that hasn't really ever been tried before. People living freely without government or any other authoritative interference. We had to establish limited government to take care of some things. But for the most part, we're supposed to be free to do as we wish. As long as we aren't infringing on that same right of someone else. What's happened over the years, though, is we've diluted this freedom more and more as generations pass. Each succeeding generation is less free than the one before it. But since this new, quote, limited freedom is what gener- what each generation grows up under, then they think that's the definition of, quote, American freedom. What's happened is we've gone from an experiment in individual freedom to an experiment in governmental intrusion and control. Except we don't need to conduct an experiment to see what happens with that. Just look at the old Soviet Union or any other central planning, government-centric country. They all eventually fail. They all become unsustainable. Our founders knew people were resilient. They can figure out ways around obstacles. They can do things for themselves quite nicely. But get government involved, and everything gets screwed up. We know how government-centric civilizations work. We don't need an experiment in that. But for some reason, we always have people in government who all of a sudden think they know everything and can take care of you better than you can yourself. We tried to limit their power through the Constitution, but the government doesn't obey it. And if the government isn't going to obey it, what use is it in having a Constitution at all? The government certainly would like to just do away with it and not have to bother obeying its rules. Then it would be free to treat the citizens of this country however it pleased. I don't know how much farther it could go down that road than we already are, but I suspect it would probably resemble Nazi Germany. So it's up to us, the citizens of this country, to defend the Constitution and our freedom and liberty. If the government is going to try to circumvent the Constitution, then we're going to have to hold government accountable. And that means voting the bums out. Every election, if need be. Even before we had the Constitution, government has been trying to seize control from the people of this country. It's been an endless battle battle ever since the beginning, and it won't ever stop. Because people will always be seeking to have power and control over others. I don't know why. Personally, I think these people, these types of people, are mentally ill. I really do. If you're seeking power and control over others, you're mentally ill and should probably be locked up until we can find out what's wrong. What's short-circuited in your brain. I'm not saying everyone in government is a mental case, but a whole lot of them are. It's getting more and more rare to find someone in government who doesn't want to use it to do something other than what's specified in the Constitution. They don't want to put it to a vote, though. They don't want the people to have a say. 
They just want to do their pet projects and programs without having to answer to anyone. Just look at how contentious these bureaucrats are when Congress dares question them about their jobs. When the people dare try to hold them accountable. You really can't blame them, though. They're just following what their boss, the president, does. Nothing's ever his fault. He's always fighting on our side. He's always trying to convince us, hey, I'm getting screwed over, too. Really, Mr. President? Are you going to give up your health insurance, your personal doctor, your government pension? Are you going to give all those huge amounts of money ex-presidents make? You will give all that to charity? The Clintons didn't have tons of money when they went into office, but they're multimillionaires now. Huge multimillionaires. Along with Al Gore, who's probably into the billions by now with his global warming scam. All these people in government feel our pain, but I don't see them jumping into line to live it. Feeling your pain and living your pain are two totally different things. Next time you hear a politician talking like that, ask them if they'll trade places with you for the rest of your lives. Or even send you their paychecks and you can send them yours. Bet they won't do it. Because they really aren't interested in living like you do. Just telling you they understand while they climb back into their limo and head to their mansion. But some people say, Patrick, I don't want to have to fight government every day. Well, I'm sorry. That's what living in a free country demands. Having a constitution isn't going to protect us. If you haven't realized that by now, then I don't know what to tell you. We have to start getting people out every election day and voting. That's how we can make changes to our government. Complaining, shooting up an airport, none of that's going to work. Voting works. Getting out and getting people to the polls on election day works. Give rides. Load up a bunch of your neighbors and friends. Make a night of it. Go vote and then go out to eat. That's how we can take back our country from those who want to ruin it. Listen, too many people have fought and died so we could have this chance at freedom. Do not let a bunch of whiny busybodies, both inside and outside government, don't let them take all of that from you. They don't deserve this country. You do. If you're going to let a bunch of these little petty politicians and bureaucrats defeat us, then what would your ancestors have to say who busted their butts to make something of this country? What would they say about you giving up the fight for the country they fought so hard for? They'd tell you to stop your belly aching and get busy. They had red coats shooting at them while they were trying to win our independence and freedom from liberty. From liberty. Independence and freedom from England. No one is doing that to you. No one is trying to kill you while you're out voting or while you go to a political meeting. We have it much easier, yet we're letting it all slip away. Increasingly, I don't think a lot of people, they don't want to live in a free country with responsibilities. We're raising whole generations of children who are taught that nothing is their fault, that everyone wins, that all outcomes should be equal. These are the people who will carry us into more and more governmental control unless we do something about this type of curriculum. They don't want to provide for themselves. They don't want to be responsible for their own life. They don't want any of that. They want to be told what to do. They want government intrusion and direction. Now, everyone who isn't insane would say, Patrick, why would people want that? Well, it's because if government's in control, you aren't responsible if your life doesn't turn out like it should. If your life isn't working out, if you aren't where you want to be, you can blame government. Or you can blame someone else, anyone but yourself. You aren't responsible for yourself, so how can you be to blame when you aren't living up to the standards that you think you should? Inside your mind, you want to be successful, but you don't want to do the work that goes with it. And since you aren't willing to do the work, you won't be successful. But blaming yourself isn't an option. So with some other entity in control, you can blame it. Or whoever it tells you is responsible for your predicament. We're already up on the half hour mark this week. When we get back from the bottom of the hour break, we'll start off with Obama lies and what they mean. I could probably do a month of shows on that subject alone. <laughs> but... 
We'll limit the scope enough to shoehorn it into the next segment. Join us in a couple minutes here on the Patrick Riggins Show and the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. So where are you going to tomorrow? Starting off this half of the show with a little bit slower music. This is one of those songs they played at a school dance. It, it just drove the chaperones crazy. <laughs> If you never attended a school dance, you won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Welcome back to the Patrick Regan Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Now, we've been hearing a lot about Obamacare the past few weeks, but what's been really grabbing headlines lately are the accusations of lying by the president, lying by the administration, how they all knew a lot of Americans would be losing their health insurance. We've had conservatives hammering the talking points. Obama's been lying. He's been lying this whole time. Everyone is supposedly all up in arms about it. Not to excuse Obama's lying, but it's, it's like none of these conservatives nor their politicians have ever lied before. Have never violated the Constitution as well. We told you he's a liar. We told you he can't be trusted. Over and over, we've been hearing this. Look, it doesn't matter whether he was lying or not. Whether he knew all these people would lose their health insurance as a result of Obamacare. None of that really matters. What really matters is the government shouldn't be doing this unconstitutional activity in the first place. Would it be better if Obama came right out and said, you're going to lose your health care coverage? Would that make it okay? If he hadn't lied about what would happen, would that make this law any more constitutional? No, it wouldn't. Still unconstitutional. We're still taking money from one citizen and forcing them to pay the medical bills of another. How is that the right thing to do, no matter if anyone is lying about other parts of the program or not? What I want you to notice, how the important thing to a lot of people is, how can we use this politically against the president? It isn't, let's get this rolled back because it's unconstitutional. It's, let's hand this president a political defeat. I mentioned this idea a few weeks ago on the show. You can check our archives, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Riggins show. If these conservatives who are complaining now, if they have been fighting to get rid of Medicare and Medicaid and any of the other socialistic medical programs, they not put more faith in their arguments, but they haven't been. They haven't been trying to do anything about any of the other non-constitutional legislation being passed in Congress until it's someone from the other side doing it. Mitt Romney implemented Romney Care in Massachusetts, and the Rep Republicans rewarded it by nominating him for president. A big part of Obamacare is based on Romney Care. Oh, but wait, Mitt's a Republican, so we should just all get behind him. Over and over on this show before the election, I played clips of Mitt Romney saying, I want to repeal and replace Obamacare. Not get rid of it. Not saying it's unconstitutional to do that type of thing. No, it's wrong if, it, if a Democrat's doing it, but it's okay if a Republican is. I played these Mitt quotes just a few weeks ago. I've got them right here. Let's see. Here we go. Two quotes from Mitt Romney. From before the election. I said we're going to replace Obamacare, and I'm replacing it with my own plan. I'm not getting rid of all of health care reform. Of course, there are a number of things that I like in health care reform that I'm going to put in place. There you go. The Republican nominee for the last presidential election. And all the Republicans, along with all these conservatives, were lined up behind him. Now, the same people are all up in arms about Obamacare. Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Ann Coulter, Mark Levin, three-quarters of Fox News, all behind their guy Romney and his idea to replace Obamacare with another piece of unconstitutional legislation. It's wrong under Obama. Oh, but it's okay under Romney. There are two sides of the same medical care coin. But if the coin lands Democrat side up, boo! If it lands Republican side up, yay. Obamacare is blatantly unconstitutional. Sitting out there day after day saying, well, you know, 
Obama was lying to you about keeping your health insurance, lying to you about keeping your doctor, sitting out there saying that day after day is hypocritical. Like everything else about this bill is just fine. The only problem is that Obama was lying about keeping your health insurance. All these conservatives screaming and yelling about that just reinforces in people's mind that the basic idea of government mandating health care for everyone, that's okay. Nothing wrong with that at all. No, it's the fact that Obama lied about being able to keep your doctor and that your rates wouldn't go up. That's the big problem. Do you see how this is the wrong argument to be making? But the reason you don't hear Republicans and most conservatives making it is because not even they see anything wrong with this type of legislation. No, we need to use it for our political gain. Don't worry about the philosophical implications of the fact it violates the principles that Republicans and conservatives supposedly believe. No, no problem there. Let's just see how much we can bang Obama and the, Repo and the Democrats over the head with this latest disaster. Let's see if we can use it to win some elections next year. Then once we get into office, we can get our version of Obamacare passed. Yeah, that's what we should do. Then we'll show those liberals how government-mandated medical insurance should be run. The whole premise of government medical care is wrong. If the premise is that you're going to take money at the point of a gun, which is how the government gets its money, just don't pay your taxes and see who comes knocking on your door. Here's a hint. It won't be the Avon lady. But this premise of taking money at the point of a gun of one, for one citizen and using it to pay the medical bills, or any bills for that matter, using it to pay another citizen's bills, that's flat out wrong. I don't care who lied. I don't care what they promised. It's wrong, period. And anyone not making this argument when they're talking about Obamacare is missing the whole point. Or they're not wanting to address it because when their side gets into office, they'll do the exact same thing. This time, though, it'll just have the Republican label instead of the Democrat one. This is what frustrates people, including a lot of conservatives out here in Flyover Land and your show host. These Republican establishment leaders and their sycophant lap dogs in the conservative media are making these little esoteric points about this or that particular Obamacare requirement. But no one is saying we shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Well, except here on this radio show. You'll hear that type of argument being made every week. This whole premise of government supporting and providing for citizens, that's wrong. That's the argument that needs to be made over and over. Not that Obama's lying. He's a politician. Of course he's a liar. You're never going to fix Obama lying. It just isn't going to happen. Screaming and yelling about it only distracts people from what the real problem is, government intrusion in private citizens' lives. If you're going to kick every lying politician out of government, then we'd have no one left in Washington. Or very, very few. I can probably count them on one hand. Although I'd be hard-pressed to come up with one, even one at this moment. What we need to do is fix the problem, and, this, and that problem is passing unconstitutional laws. This is the whole problem behind welfare, supplemental nutrition, women, infants, infants and children, all these unconstitutional laws the Republican House was passing during the shutdown. During the very time they were all complaining about Obamacare, they're still passing unconstitutional laws. Legislation that legalizes the theft of money from one citizen and giving it to another to pay their bills. Wow, we're already up on the last break here of the show. We've blown through quite a bit, but we still have one more segment of wrap-up to get to. It's usually pretty short, so we'll try to go fast. When we return here on the Patrick Riggins Show and the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network. So Welcome back to the last segment of the show this week. You're listening to the Patrick Riggins Show here on the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and News Talk 98.7 WOKI. I want to talk about something that's been happening a lot lately, and it's this government-created fear and crisis. Everything is all about government. Government is in every part of your life. Because if it wasn't, everything would fall apart. 
Every problem is a crisis that has to be fixed by government. They try to make you think that without government, society will break down. No one have food or water. There'll be massive rioting and pillaging. Now you may say, Patrick, why would the government do that? Why would it want to scare everyone in the country so much? Well, it's simple. I don't know if the females in this audience will understand, but the guys certainly will do. It's the same reason why us guys take girls to scary movies or haunted houses. It's so when the girl gets scared, she'll wrap her arms around you and squeeze. Same thing with government. The more it scares the crap out of everybody, the more they all hug the government. The more the people will cling to that supposedly warm, safe, and secure government. The problem with that is the government is the creep you shouldn't be going out on dates with. The government is the one your girlfriends have all been warning you about. That creepy guy who's been listening to your phone conversations and watching you as you walk around in public. If any guy were doing half of what the government was doing, no girl would go near him. But call it government, and all of a sudden it's okay. No one has any problem with it. Creepy guy following you around, watching you how you spend your money, tracking you on the Internet, watching you on Facebook. What girl hasn't had some weirdo trying to friend you on Facebook? But here's a government hacking your account and you still want to date him. You don't get any creepier than what the government's doing, yet it doesn't seem to be bothering anyone that much. Contrary to what you've been taught since childhood and school, government doesn't have all the answers. Back in the 70s, we had global cooling and another ice age was just around the corner. And when that didn't pan out, the government decided to give global warming a try. President Obama told us Al-Qaeda had been defeated, then Benghazi happened. And no one's ego would allow them to admit that a terror attack was even occurring or that Al-Qaeda had a hand in it. You know, it's much easier to support the overthrow of Egypt's leader and in return for helping the Muslim Brotherhood get in power, we get a nice little base over there from which to operate, from which to funnel arms to people fighting Assad in Syria. Nice little setup until we were double-crossed. So what? People got killed. They're expendable. Yeah, I don't know why polls show Americans don't trust the American government. The government's not watching out for you. It's watching out for itself. Just look what happens during civil unrest. When there's a riot or huge demonstration, government protects itself. The government buildings will have police all around them. But your house won't. More than likely, if you own a business, it won't have police around it either. But just about every single government building will have security all over it. So government's going to watch out for itself. Speaking of which, well, on that same thought real quick, Veterans Day is Monday. Have you ever stopped to think about how our government has screwed over our soldiers? The government has certainly not done right by them. It sent them overseas to fight people who don't have a prayer of making it to this country to attack us. Besides killing their friends and relatives in their own countries isn't making the population say, gee, I like those Americans. I can trust them to do me right. Heck, we can't even say that, and we live here. Our own government is spying on us in direct violation of our Constitution. Our soldiers fight and train hard to defend this country, not to be sent all around the world to police other countries. That's none of our business. Yet here we are putting our citizens who volunteer to help protect this country. Sure, they get paid, but they're not drafted into service. It isn't compulsory. What do we end up doing? We send them overseas to try and police people who don't want us there policing them. And we have no business doing it anyway. Is some country descending into chaos? Sorry, not our problem. Are our American businesses losing money in some country because a dictator took over one of their divisions? Sorry, not our military's problem. If our businesses lose money in another country, tough. It isn't our government's problem, nor is it our military's. A bunch of radicals blowing up oil wells in the Middle East? Again, not our country's problem. If our oil supply gets cut, we'll find a way to deal with it. We always do. We're Americans. We don't have any problems overcoming adversity. Besides, whoever ends up controlling those oil wells won't want the money just as badly as the government's running them now. Money's a really good motivator. That's why capitalism works so well. Now, if we're in a war for our country's survival, now all bets are off. But we shouldn't have our soldiers parked overseas all around the world. That isn't why we have a military. We don't run a babysitting service for other countries. They can change their own diapers. So I guess my message is 
this Veterans Day, say thanks to a vet by demanding that our government stop sending our soldiers around the world to be killed for people other than Americans. It isn't their job, and it isn't fair to order them to clean up the messes that other people have made in other countries. We are up on the last of the Patrick Regan Show. If you want more information about us, you can head over, head over to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Patrick Regan Show. Facebook.com forward slash Patrick Regan Show. If you want to listen to some of our older shows, including this one later on tonight, youtube.com forward slash Patrick Regan Show. YouTube.com forward slash Patrick Regan Show. Also, you can email us, Patrick Regan Show at gmail.com, or you can drop us a card or letter to WLKI. As I say every week, remember, remember this. Remind yourself of this every day this week. Liberty begins with you in your mind. Join me next Saturday afternoon at 4, where we'll be fighting for freedom, liberty, and the restoration of the Constitution. Thanks for listening and have a great week. Books about heroes and crooks and I learn much both of their style. Join us again next week for a solid dose of truth on the Patrick Riggins Show.